Hi, I'm Stephen Verdeen with the Bot Academy, and today we have a great group here. We have Mary Catherine Johnson, Andrew, Anthony, Ben, Dorothy, Gail, Gary, Lindsay, Maria, Nana, Robert, Sean, and Tom, Thomas, and Yvonne. And I'm sure I think a few others are trying to get in at the moment. And then we are also open today. If you weren't aware, we're also streaming live on Facebook um, because we have a special guest who you may know and I know I love. Uh, Mary Catherine Johnson. Yay! So today, uh, MKJ here is come on and we're going to shoot the shit a little bit on a few topics here, starting with how to choose the industry to work in, how to productize your service, how to templatize your bots, how to select other marketing components that boost your results, how to create SOPs and quickly onboard contractors or employees, and how to sell that product service to others in the same vertical. So that is awesome. So MKJ, I mean, I know how awesome you are, and I know that you're a certified grad, and I'm sure most people here do, but do you want to do like a quick intro? I mean, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. just real quick. Howdy, how y'all doing? Gary, hi there. Uh, hope you're all settled wherever you're headed. Um, no, oh man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I was in the first cohort of uh, Bot Academy, and uh, it's, it's all Andrew Warner's fault. <laughs> it's all Andrew Warner's fault. My life right now is all his fault. Uh, and I thank him every day for it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just having a blast. And I'm, I really am here to tell you that this incredible life is not going anywhere. It's not going to leave. So jump in and face whatever fears you got about it or difficulties or, uh, you know, trying to break through whatever and join us because it's crazy amazing. That's it. That's it, I love it. So uh, one of the great things that I got the experience of last year was going to Conversations Conference and seeing MKJ on stage presenting her productized service and her bot and her case study. Um, so who better than to explain to us how to kind of reach that level and productize our service so we can scale our businesses and not hit those kind of typical plateaus. Um, so because we're doing it a little bit differently today, guys, um, I think it'd be best if we, I think we should do, do questions throughout for sure, but why don't we just like click the raise hand button or just come and chat and just mention it and then we can kind of hit those questions on the fly. Does that sound good? All right. Okay, cool. Um, so MKJ, how should we start, start it off with a little chat on how to choose the industry to work in? Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Because I know you and I have both kind of done that when we first started, right? You did with the car dealerships and kind of hit that one. And, um, you know, I'm doing webinar webinars. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you want to know? What do we want to know? Well, like, how did you land on webinars? Like, what, what was like, what were the kind of the reasons why you picked webinar bots and what you're doing now? And, you know, before we get into that, I'm going to do this all at once. I'm going to promote all these people to panelists so this little annoying buzz doesn't get us. <laughs> Here we go, Buzz Central. Can you guys hear that? Is it just me? No, I hear the little dee 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 dee. Yeah, yeah, it's just driving me nuts. So we're gonna do it all one. Let's get it done with, yeah. Five or six people waiting. Okay, two more. Nope, four more. <laughs> awesome! Wow, this is amazing! I yeah. love seeing all these faces! I know, right? Jason! Hey, Jason! Awesome, Excellent. guys! All right, wow. we're in! Okay, cool. Yes. Let's get into it. <laughs> so happy! Yes, hello, y'all! Let's do this! All right, so Stephen just asked, how did I pick this? And I really, to be honest with you, it picked me. Hmm. Um, so I... Um, I'm a networking kind of gal. I'm not a cold outreach kind of gal, um, just the way I am. And I have not overcome that um, barrier, if that's a barrier. It's just not something I'm comfortable with or good at. So I'm really good at talking and really good at networking and really good at uh, conversations and chatting with people and helping people. And so really this webinar thing started when in, um, gosh, September of, two, probably September of 2017, um, when I was first approached by a gal, Michelle Bridger, who's a Facebook ad specialist. And she had a client, Allison J. Prince, who she wanted to try bots for. 
who this client was having great success with Facebook ads going to a click funnels type system into a webinar. And uh, she's like, can we chat about how that works? And I said, great, sounds like a plan. So we got on a call and chatted. And at that time, Allison was like, okay, well, let's try this. And she kind of tried it on her own and tried the whole, you know, um, get reminders in messenger kind of button, right? On the thank you page that pretty much everybody knows about. And so she started there and that didn't quite work. And we didn't really get off the ground. But then January of 2018 hit and she's like, okay, never mind. What do you think we should do? How should we do this? And she has an amazing presence uh, in her Facebook page and just her, her, her persona, her presence is, is just great. She's an amazing, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, let's do organic stuff. And so we set up this system of this organic thing that I talked about and doing weekly Facebook lives and going into a PDF that goes into the bot, not even talking about the webinar at all, and then nurturing people to the webinar after they already got value. Mm. And that thing hit the ground and it just, just worked. It just worked. And the first week, I think she got five sales by just doing that wow. through her webinar. And it was a 997 product. Um, and every week it just increased from there. And so we got amazing stats from that funnel. We got stats that show people need 2.8 times of going through that live to a PDF to the, to the webinar, 2.8 times before they buy on average. Mm -hmm. We got stats for which of those lives and PDFs worked better than others. So there was marketing data. What do her what does her audience need to know from her, the value they need before they buy? We got stats of um, uh, people going to the webinar increasing attendance by about 30% uh, from this process. So, I mean, all those stats were just crazy amazing until finally it culminated to a, a 90 day period, 99 day period, where through the bot, we made her a million dollars. I love that. Just was nuts. It was See, just nuts. And that's since incredible. Then, See, I love like the breakdown of the process of that. Like, you know, because I find like, especially when you're picking a market, like that is a big sticking point for many people. You know, like I, it comes up all the time, like, oh, which market should I choose? And I think it's a, the mindset of like, oh, the market chose me. And like, you kind of just followed the momentum of that. Uh, I know is something that Nick and I have brought up before because it just works, you know, because you can, I find that you can create enthusiasm with success and with like the connection with the client and these things and the, the actual vertical, as long as it's like a green lit market is, you know, it can choose you and like, it does. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really does. And once you get that success, once you find someone who's willing to invest in you, who's willing to treat you as a partner who's willing to take your expertise and let you run with it, uh, then the sky is truly the limit. It really, the, the universe, as far as I'm concerned, it's not the sky, it's like way out in the stars. And uh, you, you just run. And so then once we started getting that success, she started introducing us to other people within the ClickFunnels group that, uh, that, that she was getting that success because she's in, in Russell's inner circle. And uh, Michelle started bringing us other clients that she had from Facebook ads. And we just started talking about it. I did a, my number one, um, well, not the number one, my number two article on my site is this case study. And it brings in leads all the time from that. And then also Dan Gamito, I talked to him about it uh, mm -hmm. with uh, ManyChat. And he's like, come talk about it in, at the conference. And then it just goes. And right. uh, we- So I feel like we're kind of like, so that, that's kind of how like you picked your market in your industry. You found the momentum. You had this great first case study. You just blew it out of the park. And now I feel like with all those numbers and like connecting with Dan and getting on stage, we're kind of moving into like how you're starting to kind of productize this thing and, you know, Completely. get some traction. Completely. But even take it back from there. So yeah. that, that happened. This was not my first case study. Remember, right. I started Bot Academy, you know, February of 2017. Yeah. And this was a year later. Right. So that yeah. whole year was really just building custom bots for people. Yeah. Right. I'll build you a bot for a thousand dollars. Oh yeah. You know, you want me to put, um, you know, 15, you know, days worth of messages leading to five hour long videos. Yeah. We'll try that. Doesn't work. Right. It just, I mean, we just went through a year of testing and tweaking and, and, uh, got some great other case studies like, um, like, uh, 
David Sight McGarland and getting his more of a more of an adventure bot, right? So that it's kind of like the branches of a tree, you know, seven different products and how do you uh, upsell and downsell and go between those products and have the bot um, nurture people to find what they need. So mm -hmm. I was doing all of that for a year before right. now we hit webinars. Right. And now that's all I do is either webinars or custom bots. And if you want me mm -hmm. to do a custom bot, I don't just price that out off the top of my head after an hour long discovery call. Right. I mean, I have to really dive into someone's business and know their marketing and they mm -hmm. pay me to create a proposal. I love that. I remember when you first shared that idea with me, I was like, okay, so you have your strategy session call still, but instead of just doing it to make sure it's a good fit and to like get clear on what you could sell them, you're charging for that call. Yeah. It, well, the first discovery call is free, but my whole focus on that discovery call is selling. If they don't have a webinar, it's gotcha. selling the marketing automation intensive is what I call it. It's selling right. the proposal process. And uh, that's what I sell. I don't sell a bot. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we get into, that's like anywhere from a thousand to $2,000 just for that. Right. And at the end, the deliverable is a report that they can take and it's completely done what their Facebook ads should be, what type of Facebook ads they should do, what kind of a landing page they should have, what kind of a funnel it should it be, where does the email, I mean, I go through funnelytics, right? And I, right. Do, the, I do the complete strategy of the, of the funnel. So um, guys, funnelytics is the software that lets you actually map out not only your funnels, but any internal processes or any funnels, and then you can actually attach UTM codes to them and track user journeys or use it just to kind of map out like your strategy or flow. So in case anybody wanted to know, it's pretty cool. And I use the free version of that. I'm not paying for Funnelytics. I'm not doing all the UTMs and, and all of that. Okay. Um, it yeah. really is just to me a place to use strategy because you can show the icons for all the social platforms. You can right. show the icons for a landing page versus a webinar page versus delivering a PDF, all of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I use that in my strategy and then do an actual written report with all the details of what they should do. And they can just take that and go hire somebody else if they want or implement mm -hmm. it themselves. Mm -hmm. But then I also include a proposal of how right. I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't, if it isn't a webinar that they're doing, because that's all productized for me, then they have to go through this marketing automation intensive in order for me to work with them. Right. Okay. So it's like, it's, it's, it's an upsell and a way to qualify for bigger projects. Completely. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I went through a year of just building a bot. And most of what I learned with that is I don't, I never know enough. Mm -hmm. to actually make it as successful as possible. There are always other parts of their business that they either don't tell me or don't think are relevant. Right. And so as I'm building this bot, it's great. But then they talk about, oh, well, gosh, I wish I could have done this. Or why aren't we tracking that? And I'm like, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> how, <laughs> totally. how can I track it if I don't even know you have it? Right. Mm -hmm. I would love right. to have known that before I built this because then I would have built it differently. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't do that anymore. That's way more frustrating. And yeah, we might get some success, but nowhere near the success we could if I knew all that ahead of time. Right. Okay. That's great. So we, so we're kind of, we've got the momentum where the market picked you and now we've got this webinar product out, uh, that was born out of this amazing case study with this first client and like a different approach to the custom build that I'm sure, you know, 90% of the audience is doing you know, where they have the strategy session and they do the custom build. So we have kind of a twist on that where you not only charge for that initial call, but you, you have the ability to make everything way more effective um, by deep diving and, and having the client and only working with clients that are really committed to the outcome. That's it. That's it. And anyone who's not willing to do that and is like, I had one guy say, well, no, let me go figure out my marketing first. I'm like, dude, that's exactly what I'm going to do for you. Right. What, what do you mean? You want, okay, that's great. Go figure out your marketing and then let me know how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, but it, but it really truly allows that. So really we could take either direction. If you want to productize mm -hmm. and find and take that market. And I have a lot of thoughts on that because, um, Michelle Bridger and getting involved with those people, there was a specific way I got involved with them. They didn't just find me. Mm -hmm. I specifically had a strategy to uh, put myself out there to find those people. So which do we want to talk about? The marketing automation intensive and the custom bots or the picking your, your market and going after a productized service? Wow. Those both sound awesome. Uh, which would have a bigger impact on the audience? 
You know, I think uh, depending on where everybody is, if you're all new to Bot Academy, if you've been here for a while, um, I would think that uh, finding the niche and getting clients from this, uh, this other more organic reach strategy that I use might work. Mm -hmm. Unless you really are a marketing person. If you know a lot about marketing and you are confident in your marketing and you're keeping up on all the marketing trends in the conversational space, uh, that's the only way this other, this other marketing automation intensive can work. So Is let's, uh, let's talk that. about clients because I'm getting pinged a bunch of clients, 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 clients right now. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Yeah. Because we all have to pay for this thing, right? Right. We Come on. Pay for this fun we're having. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's start there. Now. Um, I love that. We have to pay for the fun we're having, meaning building the bots out and getting the results. True. Hello. Right Isn't that fun? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. We got to be able to pay for that. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So number one, the way, like I said before, I'm not a cold outreach kind of gal. So I'm not going to send out a thousand emails to cold pitch to people. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to go to people's contact pages and try and cold me message them and try and get them to hire me or cold message them in, in messenger or any, or LinkedIn or anything like that. That's not right. comfortable for me. Okay. So what I do is I go into the medium and this is how I got my first clients. I went into my own messenger and I happened to be lucky that I had a podcast at the time that was specifically geared toward parents in business, parent entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so all my connections were parent entrepreneurs. So they were building some kind of business at the time. Right. And so that's what I did. I went into Messenger and just started messaging people. Uh, these are private messages. And I just mm -hmm. said, hey, what are you working on? How are you doing? I haven't heard from you for, for a while. Let's catch up. Right. And it was really just that. And it, I knew they were all people who possibly could hire me because they were entrepreneurs. Right. Um, and that's how I got my first couple of clients, just by putting myself out there and asking, what are you working on? And they came back with, this was launch season, they came back with, you know, gosh, I'm working on my, my course launch and my webinar launch, and it's not going really well. Last year, I had huge numbers. This year, nobody's buying, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh man, you know, gosh, you know, maybe I can help because they already knew me and knew right. what my story. Maybe I can help. Do you want to jump on a call? And they said, sure. And out of three calls that I scheduled like that, two of them purchased. Right on. Done. And you know what, guys? Like this, I mean, MKJ is still discussing this from the context of like, she had been putting herself out there. She had this podcast. She had a bit of this following going on. But this is something that can be created from even the step behind that. Like, yeah. you know, from my perspective, like coming from the film world, like I definitely had no, I didn't know anything about business. And I, but yet I still was, a, I was always a little bit uncomfortable with cold outreach too. There was just something about it that felt a little bit less connected as I wanted it to be. So in a, in a similar way, I would help people in forums and try to just answer, look for questions I could answer. And I had this mindset, I forget who taught me this, I think Dane Maxwell or Andy Drish, but you, if you look at an entire market like this, and this is like all the people in the chatbot world, um, you're never gonna be all the way at the beginning or all the way at the end. So if you're somewhere in here, there's so, this many people you can help and this many people you can learn from. So I would just look for the people who I could help and start answering questions and then people would just either reach out, see the answers and still to this day reach out to me based off random posts years old um, or I would just start hitting people up and just be like, Hey, that was an interesting question. Do you want to just chat about it a little bit? I'm interested in this stuff. And the networking part was just so much fun. So that's it. And that's exactly how I met this Michelle Bridger, right? Mm -hmm. This Facebook ads person. So yeah. I went exactly did that. I was, I was basically going through groups, yeah. right? So I belong to the boss moms group and I have a lot, you know, lots of mom entrepreneurs cause that's right. my gig or at least it mm -hmm. was. They're now 17 and 20. So I'm not in the mom entrepreneur <laughs> gig anymore. <laughs> They're on their own, baby. Uh, so I'm in a little different gig now. Now they're, uh, now they're JV partners. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly, they are. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, but I was in these groups and I would just go into the groups and answer questions. So somebody put out a question, you know, like what's going on with this whole messenger thing, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. does anybody have any ideas? And is this going to work or whatever? And I just jumped in and answered the question. And, oh my goodness, right. this is how you, this is what's going on. You know, you might think about it if you have this kind of business or but just totally. Um, the number one thing I changed when I jumped into chatbots was no expectations. Mm -hmm. I absolutely have no expectations when I jump in and answer a question or talk mm -hmm. to someone. I'm not going, 
oh God, they have to hire me. Oh my God, they have to hire me. What if they don't hire me? They have to hire me. I have to find a way to hire me. I'll, I'll do this. I'll change it and I'll, and I'll do that instead. Even though it's not really what I want to do, I've got to get that client, right? I don't have that anymore at all. Right. Not just because I don't need it, but even before I had no expectations that anyone was going to hire me because that put too much pressure, right? Right, yeah. So I went in and I would answer this question and Michelle Bridger trolled that. She just looked at, she, she ghosted it. She just went and saw it and then reached out to me privately and just sent me a message going, wow, that was amazing. I've been, I just now started to learn about this. I've been looking for someone who might be able to help me with some of my clients. Can we chat? Right. That was it. That started it from a post on a group um, wow. of me answering a question. And uh, now I've got a webinar chat bot. I love that. That is like the, you have a special talent of being able to boil things down into a sentence. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. So that was kind of how the webinar chatbot was formed. So that's the product. The product is the webinar chatbot. Yes, that's exactly it. And Excellent. even though when I first started talking to her, it wasn't, it wasn't Alison J. Prince that she was thinking of. She actually introduced me to David Seidman Garland. Mm -hmm. That was the first one. And so he's well uh, known for, as an online course creator, correct? Correct. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. um, and so we developed a relationship there. I built a bot for him. And then we just kind of stayed in each other's world. I built a bot for her because she was going to do a course and blah, blah, blah. And then time goes on from, that was June of 2017. And then we go to September when she introduces me to Allison. And uh, then, you know, we pick up from there. But really that... Uh, I, I continue to do that. Mm -hmm. um, when I launched my course, the copywriting course, my yeah. project manager did the same thing. So my project manager is an actress. She's yeah. an actor. And she went into all these digital nomad groups. And she just started, people were asking, what am I going to do? I really want to travel, but how do I make money? And I kind of checked out this copywriting thing, you know, regular email copywriting and sales page. And, and they're like, I don't know if I can do that. Is anybody making money in traveling or making money as a digital mo nomad? And she just jumped in because she's that age group and started yeah. talking about, oh yeah, I'm doing blah, blah, blah. And this is what I'm doing. And she got like 50 leads to her affiliate link in the matter span of like 12 hours. Wow. Just by commenting and then back and forth when people asked questions, she jumped back in and answered them and talked and then she was getting direct messages and private messages. I mean, it was just going nuts. Wow. But that's how it works. I love that. So I'd love to, so I, I feel like I have a pretty great understanding of like how you got to product and uh, I would love to know like, okay, so, so you've productized this service, you've simplified and became to like create a way to e earn even more off custom builds. How do you turn that into a template and, and like get into the, the scaling metrics? Yeah. So that's, that's the next phase. So once mm. you find that client, once you find the thing that you enjoy doing. So I really loved creating this webinar chat bot and getting the results. So obviously the conversions are visits to the webinar, right? Attendees mm -hmm. to the webinar. And then we also bring it back in to find out after they've gone to the webinar, how many of the people that came through the bot actually purchased. Right. So that's where we look at the metrics of, yeah, our first conversion is attendance, but obviously the ultimate conversion is how many people are going to buy sure. and how quickly can we warm them up to get them to do that. So mm -hmm. once we saw the sales, I'm a results person. I, if it's not selling, if somebody doesn't get sale, I'm depressed. I'm like, <laughs> something's wrong. What are we doing mm -hmm. wrong? And going and changing things. And when they mm -hmm. get sales, I'm high. So I loved that first. So you got to yeah. enjoy. So if somebody tried sure. to get me to build a, an insurance bot, there's no way in God's free earth <laughs> I would do that. Sure. I just can't do it. I hate yeah. insurance. So yeah. you got to find something that at least you enjoy, right? Yeah. So do well, that. That's important, right? Because when you look at these businesses and you look at case studies of businesses to grow to the type of aspirations many of us have, it's not something that happens right away. It happened, you know, you build it up over two, three, four, potentially even 10 years. Yes. And you have to know that it's not going to be successful unless you can actually imagine yourself doing this in 10 years yes. or in at least something like five years. And you know that you can have that alignment and that joy piece because that motivates you more than anything, I think. It, it does. And if, if you're not going to enjoy it, don't do it. So that's my first advice is think about uh, or look at your network, look at your world and see what industries people are in that you are in groups for. I mean, even mm -hmm. gardening. I had a guy reach out and ask me to come speak at a gardening convention. And this is, this is um, people who, this is companies who make gardening trowels, 
right? Hose and, um, and, and tools and things like that. And I'm like, you, what? You guys want bots? You know, it was, and which is amazing. My husband loves gardening, but you'd be surprised. You think it's not digital products or restaurants, but believe me, they're infiltrating everywhere. So if you have a, a, a hobby or anything like that you enjoy, um, start there and see if there's a, a possible opportunity. And then once I, once I got that webinar chatbot to convert mm -hmm. and we started blowing it up, then we looked at, okay, what, what pieces of this are vital? So which growth tools, right? So we have the ref URL and the comment tool are the two that we use. So yeah. those we product, we basically template, we created a template mm -hmm. and uh, did a, the, the specific growth tools that we use and the specific. So sorry, if so for anybody who doesn't know, um, like you can basically create any bot as a template. You just have to start adding the specifications that MKJ is discussing here um, in case you weren't aware. Sorry. Yeah, and I would suggest you do that when you get something that works is really think strategically what parts of this are, are vital. Mm -hmm. And so we looked at the different growth tools that are vital. We looked at the different um, sequences or flows that were vital and it custom fields or rules or any of those things that we now have available that we didn't have several years ago, a couple years ago, but all those parts, what's vital to make this work? What about mm -hmm. the zaps? You know, are there zaps you're using or is it a Google sheet uh, or is it Integra map? What are you using and what is vital for this to work? and put that in a template because what will happen is you don't have to sell that. That's even an internal guide. So when we get a new webinar chatbot client, my project manager takes that template and puts it on that bot. And we start from there and then she iterates, then she um, edits and does the copywriting that's specific to that uh, brand and that brand voice. Um, and that's where the magic happens. It's not just the many chat template or the chat fuel template or whatever mobile monkey, whatever you're using. It really is what you put in it and making mm -hmm. sure that that brand voice, um, like Yvonne was talking about earlier, like you were talking about with Yvonne's bot, mm -hmm. that's the magic. It, that it is has the magic. To really speak. The, yeah. the personality, right? So, yes. so if I do, I, I want to make sure I understand that right. So, do you basically create the template in a way where when someone kind of takes it over, the parts that are instructed to to change are mostly around like voice and the identity of the experience? Yes, so we pretty much leave the template alone. We have the same number of messages. So we have the webinar follow-up and the webinar follow-up, most of our clients have a 72 hour deadline funnel, right? So it's they, it ah. reaches a deadline in 72 hours and then they're kicked out and they can't get in for a week, sometimes only six days, minus 30 days you're kicked out for 30 days. I um, love that software. Cause like, cause so you can't do the schemies like, you know, so many marketers historically yeah. would use things like that and then just reopen after. Right. Yeah. But yeah. with these, the software, it's like, no, no, this is actually closed for the month. And you actually yes. get that. The, you create the emotion you're looking for. Right. Yes. And not only that, when I have a deadline funnel on mine, I have another page that it automatically redirects to with a video for me going, Oh, I'm sorry. We're closed for uh, the, the uh, enrollment for this is closed. Um, but you can click below and get on the wait list from when we reopen. Right. And so then I get them re-engaged in that wait list and I have a funnel that goes for a certain number of days because I know when they came in is the deadline is in and then I have a certain number of days and then we have a, an automated uh, sequence that opens it back up and uh, right. then invites them to come back in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you, if you get the, the actual template, the actual, and when I talk about a template, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about the text blocks and mm -hmm. the, the typing delays, you know, and the- Yeah, user. the whole, the flows all connected and integrated. Yeah, all yeah. those details of where, what, subscri what sequence you're gonna subscribe into, all that stuff. So when we look at that template, we put them on a client, really the only thing we change is the copy that goes in there. Mm -hmm. And it's almost always the same. So we have, we use pretty much the same intro until there, there was one client uh, today that I was talking to my project manager about that we have to change that because mm -hmm. it, the first button um, when we're trying to nurture them to the webinar only got a 12% click-through rate, which is, that's crap. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> not good. Right? That's not what we normally get, right? No, and in case anyone's feeling a little overwhelmed, because we are kind of getting into some details, um, this is something that MKJ has like built and put together over a lot of time. So like when you are taking that action every single day and just putting in that work, what you end up with is what we're discussing. And that's why it was yes. like from start to finish in a sense. Um, yes. Because yeah, it's just super cool. We have a couple questions here. Um, uh, Anthony asks, is Mary's webinar bot template available for us to see? <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Now, there, there is, uh, the templates themselves are uh, no big deal. I do typically sell them, um, but I can definitely show you guys the, the basics of the template and uh, share it with y'all. I mean, I've shared it with a couple. I think I've, I think I've shared it with Steven and Nick and, you know, quite a few people. So I have no problem showing you what the, that template would look like. Yeah. That's super generous. And one more from Dan. Um, so his is more about the flows. So when creating a sequence, going with the template idea and format, um, are there any theories or in your experience where that explain how to funnel leads through the education piece from like soft sell, hard sell in that perspective or like cold audience, warm audience, hot audience? Yeah, that's a really good question. And uh, the only way I can answer that is to say how I typically create my copy. And uh, the number one thing is you start with a conversion first. So I start with where am I going? It's like building a roadmap. Where am I going? What's the conversion I want to get? And then if I have that conversion, let's say, again, webinar attendance, um, what steps, what adventure does that person need to go through to get to that conversion? Mm -hmm. What do I need to say to them? How, do they, how warm do they need to be? What do I need to offer them? in terms of education, content, value, things like that to get to that conversion. And then once I have that adventure, that idea, is that gonna be the same day? Is it gonna be over a period of three days? Um, how high priced is the product? If we're talking about a $5,000 mastermind or a $10,000 mastermind, that's gonna take a lot more warming up than a 997 you know, buy it now DIY product, right? Totally. So you have to think about that. What's the conversion and how warm do they need to be? What do they need to know? And how do they need to address the pain they're in to get to that conversion? Because that's the solution they need. And then once you have that done, then you look at how do I get them in? Mm -hmm. How, what, what is the lead generation? What is the growth tool I'm going to use? Am I going to do a Facebook ad? Am I, do, am I going to do a Facebook live? Am I going to just send out a message on my uh, email list? Am I going to have a top bar on my, on my website, right? Mm -hmm. Then you look at the, the lead generation. But I always start with a conversion first and think, mm -hmm. what do I have to build? And how, how warm do I have to get them? And how long is that going to take? That's all marketing. Yeah. Um, what am I going to need to do to get them to that conversion first? Then I can look at how to get them in. Because if I start at the beginning and say, how am I going to get leads? I don't know where to put them. I don't know what to do with them yet. So how do I know what leads to get if I don't know the conversion first? And I love that because I feel like one of the best use cases for bots is being able to segment your audience and put them into those buckets, right? And so, you know, like if someone's coming from a completely cold audience, nurture, you know, warm webinar, cold, hot sales call, depending on the product, right? It's yeah, well, nurture. and then you also have, so a lot of our clients, they actually do Facebook ads to the bottom of the funnel. And those work crazy amazingly. So yeah. we're talking about, they go through the 72 hour uh, close car deadline, right? So right. at the last day of the cart being open, they'll do retargeting ads in Facebook going, hey, I don't want you to miss this. We're open for just another 24 hours and I wanna make sure I answer all your questions so you don't miss this. What mm -hmm. questions do you have? And it's just basically a send message ad. And then they oh. jump in and do live chat with people in the bot to warm them up. That converts better than any cold lead we could ever have because they're already been interested and they use people who visited their website or people who've seen the webinar or, you know, people who've been in the bot, uh, anything, people in their email list that still haven't bought yet. Um, they'll, they'll retarget those ads and bring them into messenger because then people ask questions. They still feel it's anonymous enough that they can ask the question and uh, they make more sales there than almost anywhere. I love that. I so love you have that. to know that. You have to know where you are in the funnel in order to know whether those ads are going to work and what you, know, what you need to do. 
And I think that helps too that, you know, you're mapping these things out, right? Because it helps put like a visual, like with Funnelytics, for instance, like, because it helps put the visual representation of what's happening and just way easier to digest and make uh, good decisions. Um, yeah. So would you say that like, are we kind of into like the other marketing components that boost results right now, like kind of ads and, you know, mapping these yeah. things out and... Yeah. And connecting it all. So that's the number one thing that's been the biggest bane of my existence is, or actually my project manager's existence. <laughs> I, do <this. laughs> I don't, um, but she has, we're talking stats, right? We're talking, how do you know if it's performing? Right. And um, Dorn, um, I don't remember what her last name is, but anyway, she oh, did it. Oh, I think it. it's uh, Yeah. So yeah. She, she did a, a video on the, I think, the ManyChat community on this uh, software called Cyfe, C-Y-F-E. C -Y -F -E. Okay. And it's awesome, but you still have to use Zapier to get this data. It's still not easy to know when a purchase happens when it's off of ManyChat. It's, sure. still, it's still not really simple and easy. You have to connect lots of different things. Yeah, um, some, and some of these things, like I know I've tried that with UTM codes before and learned that that's actually not always super accurate no, as well. None of it is, it's yeah, crazy. It's crazy. Because, you know why? It's because it's dependent on email still. And right. people use a different email in Facebook than they do to purchase. Ah, yeah, and so when they point. have that other email to purchase, now they're no longer accessible. We no longer know who they are because their right. email that they told us in Facebook, that Facebook populates that button. I actually wish that wasn't there, to be honest <laughs> with you, um, because it's always an old email. Right. It's always old email that they use to start their Facebook account. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, uh, there's a higher percentage of bot leads that we can't quantify because of that email difference. So the way we try and get around that is to go into a Google Sheet first and mm. populate that Google Sheet with uh, the user ID, the messenger ID. Yeah. And then we do the zap back to the Google Sheet. So we bring that user ID to uh. their CRM and then we break, go back into the Google Sheet to see if that user ID and their CRM and the user ID and the Google Sheet match. Oh. And then no matter what email address they use, now we can identify them. That's right? beautiful. But even that doesn't always work. Just so you know, guys, that, that like few lines there is worth the price of admission. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that is a really great idea because that's a problem that I've seen come up a, with a lot of like our colleagues who are also kind of experts and whatnot. Like, you know, and people just didn't have like a really great way to do it. Um, so I really love that. That's really cool. Yeah. And even that's not perfect. So what we do is we actually manually, because we want to know every flip in person that we've gotten as a sale in the bot mm -hmm. to, uh, to justify our existence. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and so we actually manually go through the stats. So wow. most of our, most of our clients have a Google sheet with all their sales. So it's got everything on it, their address, their, you know, shoe size, I don't know, everything. And it, we look at that sheet and we every single week go through all the sales manually to match them to the bot. And we wow. match names. We match whatever we can find, email addresses if they match, which don't often match as well as names. Um, and we just double check. Mm -hmm. So some of our clients, I mean, Allison, basically we're talking a couple hundred sales a week that we have to go through. And wow. one of our clients, actually her name is Krista, she's, we've fallen behind. I was just talking to my poor project manager this morning. She, I'm like, okay, so what's, your, what's on your goal today? And she's like, I gotta do Krista's stats and I really don't wanna do it. <laughs> <laughs> because now it's gotten huge, right? right so this is gonna yeah. take a few hours to go through name by name. Well, if there are any uh, software developers in the audience <laughs> looking for a pain point to solve, uh... You know, I'm telling you, yeah, is, Tom, uh, I, yep, yep. <laughs> Tom, Tom's smiling right now. Yes. I know he could write something for this easy. Oh, right yeah, for sure. Take him a weekend. <laughs> Come on, Tom, help us, brother. <laughs> yeah, and we've talked about it before, but it's still an issue. It's still a difficulty, and um, <laughs> Saif is trying to do it, but, you know, they still got to use Zapier and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So right. yeah, maybe we should talk. <laughs> I think so. We've talked about this before. We may need to talk again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because yeah. it comes up, like I know uh, Zach Hansen, who's another great member of the community, um, has also uh, come up and, you know, and he does a lot of this type of stuff too with the Facebook ads. He's a Facebook ad expert also. And he always is complaining about like having to, you know, confirm that sales yeah. had occurred. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, depending on the Facebook ads people you might be working with, because of course I don't have, I don't do Facebook ads myself. I am mm. completely bots. Yeah. 
but I know enough to get myself in trouble. Right. And I know enough to, you know, say things. Um, yeah. But the, the Facebook, so the teams like Michelle Bridger, we don't compete. I know a lot of Facebook ads people and bot agencies, they look at each other as competing because, yeah, because it's like, oh no, that's my person. We got that sale. Oh no, no, I got that sale. It's, <laughs> it's all in the Facebook ecosystem. There's truly yeah. no way you can tell. I mean, so many people, I was just talking to another client via email. He's like, well, all those sales, he got six sales this week. Um, and he says, all those sales are, um, already leads. So all you did was warm them up. I'm like, and that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would suggest that, uh, you know, lead generation versus conversion is the discussion there. And that you know, is exactly it's a, yeah. it's a joint effort. So yes, we're all in the same boat and I don't yeah. care if you're what, I'm not going to look at your bottom of funnel. Yeah. Like, oh no, that's my person. Uh, no, I'm going to say, go for it. Yeah, that's great. As many, as many conversions as we can get working together in the same ecosystem. And now we're going to open it to WhatsApp and Instagram people. So <laughs> they're going to be everywhere. Right? Everywhere. So you're not going to be able to segment that, oh no, this is my person. And oh no, I got that person. Come on, get over and it. And we also, we also know that like the multiple touch points is a part of, the, is a part of yes. success, right? That's like, marketing. That's marketing. What is it? Six to eight touch points to lead to a sale? Yeah. So it's you, typically, know, you got the ads, you got the yep. bot, then you got the retargeting, then you got the webinar, yep. then you got the LinkedIn. You got the email still. Emails. Some people still do email. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So I feel like, you know, we used to have some really interesting ideas here for some different components that help with our results. Um, so how, I mean, and this is like, this is, can be difficult. And I know for me that this was like, this was the point where I made a huge leap where I stopped just doing everything myself and I started, started, okay, what do I repeat every single day that's hard? And I just started mapping things out. Okay, this is one process. This is another process. You know, here are the, vi the instructional videos my clients always need. Like, and start documenting these things. How do we create SOPs to quickly onboard our contractors? Yeah, there you go. So everything in the beginning, everything I did, I recorded myself doing. Mm. So I just went into, um, I have ScreenFlow. Um, sometimes I used, that was, I used ScreenFlow before I used Loom, right? Yeah, and okay. I remember somebody in our group that introduced us to Loom. Was it you or Nick? I think I maybe. I don't know. We, we both use it. And yeah, but I mean, way in the beginning, a long time ago, that was, that was the first I heard of it was somebody in our group. Oh, and it was probably Nick, because I think he was in earlier than I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somebody, and so I'm like, oh my God, this is a godsend. So, yeah. you know, you go in and you basically start a loom and you just start doing what you do. So my template, when I was going to put this onto a, a client's bot, uh, I just started the loom and I talked, you can tell I don't have a problem talking. I just, <laughs> talked, I just talked myself through it. I just yeah. talked about what I was doing. Okay, first we got to do this and then we got to do this. And then, oh, and that made me know this and say, oh, sorry, nope, you got to start over here first, right? And then so I would go back and then change it, go, you know what, I've got to do this first. And made me go through that process and really nail step by step, first, second, third, fourth, what I needed to do. And if I had to stop the video when I messed up like that, because I didn't want someone to be going in the wrong direction and then all of a sudden turn because I changed my mind, right? So I'd stop and I'd start over. And just do that until you get a clean video of what the whole thing you do. I don't care if it takes you two hours, right? Mm -hmm. it, it just everything you do in this process. And we're talking, I started this with not necessarily the template. We're talking like a, a contract, an agreement. That's where I first started hiring someone. So instead of right. me taking the time to go customize my agreement with the client's name and address and the details of what I was going to do for them um, and all of that, uh, and then turn it into a PDF so that then I could put it up into HelloSign and send it to them. That process, that's, I started there because mm -hmm. that's easy for someone else to do for me. Um, they don't have any, need any education in bots to do that. Mm -hmm. And that was my first SOP. And so that I, I could that. send off some of those administrative tasks that still, even though they feel like, oh, that's easy, it still takes you minimum half hour to go find me a name and address and get up your template doc and, and uh, you know, find out where to put it, search and find and replace and blah, blah, blah. It's still going to end up being about a half hour at least. Right. Um, and so that's, that's and even though it's a half an hour, what could you yeah. do with it? 
Like, it, yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's also just like decision fatigue. You know, like I find that when one of the one huge pain point is like when you're trying to remember everything you're doing, it just starts to weigh on you. Right. And, and nothing is simple. So I just thought I'd just for just 10 seconds screen share. Like I like to use Asana. So I just started doing this like, hey, how does how did these sales happen? And I just started writing down, you know, what it looks like. And it actually ends up being this simple in terms of what I'm running. You know, I do this three step sales thing. Then I have the onboarding process. And then instead of, you know, having to like find or create everything new each time. It's just, I just go to these files and make it super simple. Yep. So I think similarly to you, you know, just being able to um, just make it easier on yourself and save your own time. Uh, and then not actually sometimes, and then that, that I think leads, it lends itself to when you hire a contractor to build the bots for you, all of a sudden your process is so tight that they can implement without needing all of this interaction and guidance. Um, so you can move a lot faster, right? Completely. And, you know, I, I hire people in the same way that I, uh, I uh, to do my sales. It's all relationships. So I'm not going to go in the beginning. I started with maybe a Fiverr or a, um, a free up or, you know, something I never really went to Upwork, but free up or Fiverr and started just hiring people in general. And that worked for a while. But then I started getting more and more and I started looking at it like, you know, I, why am I paying these fees when I can find someone who can actually work for me on a contract basis weekly or monthly? And so then I went out again to my network to try and say, who do you know? Mm -hmm. Who's a great admin? Who's a whatever? And found an amazing person. The first person who was an actual uh, regular hire who's stayed with, been with me the whole time and, um, and grown and, and is now doing her own thing. Um, oh, but yeah. Then, Love Yes, you know, yes. Sam. Yes, yes Sam. Yeah. Um, and, sh and so, you know, you, you get that process and you find out who can do what. So mm -hmm. I didn't start out with just a bot builder, another bot builder. Mm -hmm. um, it was more the administrative so I could be freed up to do what I do, the marketing and the bots. Gotcha. Um, and then you get little by little into uh, other people when you get more clients than you can handle yourself, then you need to find someone to help you with the bots. And that's when I again went to my network and uh, went, brought in Rachna. I'm sure you all mm -hmm. know who Rachna is um, and uh, worked with her and had her help me build. Actually, she helped me build the entire process for this webinar chatbot. She did all the integrations and I did the marketing stuff. And so we were an amazing team. And then she had a baby and took a different tack. <laughs> totally hey yeah. some life inspiration there um, oh it's amazing and what i what i noticed as well when you start going through that process of like sops and like creating the team is like you i feel like one of the hardest things to let go of is doing everything yourself because like you can trust yourself right but what i realized quickly is that i'm not the best at everything <laughs> oh my gosh that's exactly what i was going to say so when yeah. you bring in people with that relationship instead of just fiverr or upwork or something like that and you actually have a relationship and they are just as maybe not as, but still very committed to your company as you are, they, they definitely want success because the more success you have, the more hours they have, right? Yep. Um, and so when you find those people, they're going to, if you are open to it, if you have an environment that allows them to give you feedback, mm -hmm. um, which is vital, not everybody does. If you think it's all you and you're afraid of someone else having some other information, uh, then you need to work on that. Because if you don't get past that, and you don't get past the feeling that, no, I know everything. Nobody can tell me anymore. I'm the best at bots, not them. They're just an admin. If you have that attitude, you're going to be, you're going to be held back. Mm -hmm. So open that up because she gave me so many ideas. She was the first person to do all the stats for me, the manual stats. So wow. she's the one that went in and went, you know what, Mary, we're finding out that it's, t and she did the statistics. She says, it's taking 2.8 times. People are coming in the bot, seeing the, the live and getting the PDF and going to the webinar 2.8 times on average over the last eight weeks before they purchase. I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's amazing. So cool to know. I had no clue. I was not even looking at that. I was just diving in, down in the in the weeds. And she she created those stats because she was the one looking at the stats and going, okay. And not only that, these PDFs are performing outperforming any of the others. So why don't you have her do things like this? Oh, I'm like, man. brilliant, brilliant. Um, so yeah, that's a key point. Uh, Stephen, absolutely key point. Be open to people coming with different ideas than you do. And I'm like, 
I've been in online business since 2003, right? Mm -hmm. I got this. Nope. I think some of the best entrepreneurs in the world are people without any skills <laughs> in, the, in a sense, because just the people that are able Fresh. to create teams and like, Fresh eyes. and, and, uh, and, and see, th and, and take feedback and, and see things just as like a system and not kind of like needing individual skill sets. Um, yeah. You see that in some of the best CEOs out there. So we have a couple of different questions in here. Um, so firstly, I wonder, I'm not sure if you, you may have some feedback on this. Anthony was asking, how many interactions on average do you, do you expect to make to make a sale? So that definitely depends on what you're selling. Uh, mm -hmm. That absolutely depends. Um, but even with, so let me just take the webinar chat bot. Even with that, we still uh, have that 2.8 times uh, statistic that still bears true no matter what webinar we do. So we have webinars anywhere from the lowest we do, lowest price product is $500. I, I won't go below $500 product. Mm -hmm. um, and the highest price is $11,700. Mm -hmm. And so all of those any, and anywhere in between, the, the sweet spot seems to be a $997 where um, when people have that priced product, they get uh, higher numbers. But the 11,007, I mean, that person in the first three months of the year, we made her over $238,000 in sales in the first three months with a $5,000 and $11,000 product. Um, so not too shabby. And that was in the that was the very first webinars we did for her. That wasn't wow. after she'd been doing it. That was from day one. That's so um, cool. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Like that's so, a lot. Like, this is a new, new channel, right? Like this isn't like they had to create a new product and do this whole launch. It's like, no, they just added a channel. That, that you just throw rocket fuel on what they're already doing. Exactly. It's, that's like a big deal. Like, cause they, it's yeah. not like they have to do that much more work. No. No, and they don't, and this is with no Facebook ads. Without, yes, yeah, so like all organic. No, this is all organic, just in the bot, just from them doing a live on their on their business page, going to the bot every single week. That's awesome. And it just really, and that's where the marketing comes in. Once you can advise people on that, that's the toughest thing my clients have to get, mm -hmm. is to understand that this is not Facebook ads. This is not just throwing money at it giving them one 10 page PDF. That's the guide to everything and all and all of the universe and then expecting them to buy immediately on a webinar. Right. That's not the way it works anymore. <laughs> I mean, it might work if you have a lot of money to throw at it, yeah. but, uh, but if you don't, that's not. So this is organic giving value first mm -hmm. and Facebook and Google have taught us to do ads. Mm -hmm. And so this is, foreign. So, but anyway, so right. get back to your question. It really does depend on the price of the product, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm talking with a custom bot, but with yeah. the webinar chat bot, it really is three follow-up messages. It's, right. it's the nurturing in the beginning, giving value, inviting, and typically the number of messages we send the first growth tool message to deliver the PDF that supports the live they just did. Then uh, I think it's about four messages at, with some, some conditions, some uh, questions to segment themselves. Um, about four messages before we say, hey, you know, in the meantime, we've got this free training. Would you like to see it? And then we go into nurturing to the webinar. And if they say, yeah, we'd like to see it, then we tell them a little bit about what they're going to do. So that's about another four messages. And this is all in the same day. The wow. same. We're talking within a span of about oh, 15 really? minutes. really? I don't think I They're in the webinar. That. Oh, Within a span okay. of like 15 minutes from the live or before or earlier, they're in the webinar. Oh, wow. um, okay. And so that's probably about a, a total of maybe eight messages in that time frame. Right. Um, and then they go to the webinar. And then from there, you look at days. Then we have three follow-up messages from when they watch the webinar. And if they didn't go to the webinar, then we have a condition saying, if they did go, we want to know. And we say, hey, you know, what did you think of the training? Just in case you didn't get to stay all the way through to the end, here's the replay. You know, would you like to see some of the testimonials from some of the people that have done X, Y, Z? Here's testimonials. Um, and the people who didn't see it go, oh my gosh, we missed you yesterday. Jump in. We've only got a couple of days for this to be open. I'd love to get your feedback on the training and here's the replay link kind of thing and right. we go through it a little bit of a different you know direction right That's okay pretty much three days of follow-up no matter the price of the of the product we're selling i love that i'm sure that's helpful to anthony but anthony let me know if you have anything to follow up with there um cool so one other question here which i think is probably pretty relevant to some of our audience as well um 
For someone who's new to this, do you think it's necessary to create a company or LLC before you start hiring contractors for these types of tasks? Uh, the shorter answer is no. <laughs> really, I didn't have a website. I didn't, I didn't have anything except the name of my company, Messenger Funnels. And I just started with that and started and, and sold my first bot in uh, January before I even started Bot Academy. Um, I, right before, right after I talked to Andrew, because at that time he required a, uh, the, the, his first cohort, he actually required a um, private call with him, 15 minute call with him to see if he mm. qualified. Right. And I had to pay for that call <laughs> uh, and then go into the course. So I just had the name. I, the name just came to me and I'm like, that's the name. And I went out and secured the domain, even though I had no, no website, I mm -hmm. secured the domain and started uh, using that name. Right. Um, I still don't have an LLC. I'm still a sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing I would say is uh, get your brand, get your, the name of your company, what you're going to, to sell under, mm -hmm. um, get that as soon as possible. Because since then, I've had to send out um, half a dozen cease and desist letters to people who've tried to use the name of my company as their own name and name their own products after my company name. Right. And um, so if you have that name set and you're under that name and you've sold under that name, then you can protect that in a common law um, trademark. And then you can look at actually trademarking it and doing an LLC and all those things if you want to. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think like we, there's, I think a couple different thoughts that I'm having here. And one is like being a sole proprietor is still in a sense, like, having a business license and like taking action oh, yeah. and respect and like oh, yeah. creating like a tax structure of sorts and whatnot. Yes. Um, yes. So if that was kind of where you, what you were kind of inquiring about um, with this question here, uh, Nana, um, I would, de I definitely, I know, I don't know the laws as well in the U S I'm in Canada, but I definitely did not have a website or, and I got started without even a sole prop. I know that the rules are, and you have to hit a certain uh, financial threshold before it becomes a hundred percent necessary. Um, and then I became a sole prop for basically a year and I didn't have a website. I mean, I didn't don't think I had a website until like eight months in when I was already kind of like scaling and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I, I definitely always think it's better to just get in there, get talking to people, having conversations, finding problems and pain points you can solve really well. And then going through this, this call and just going through those different points that we're discussing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I'm lucky I'm married to a tax accountant. <laughs> so I don't have to touch any of that. He just tells me do this and I do it and yeah. we're done. Uh, definitely. I got the business license. I'm in California. So we need our County to give us a business license. So I was a, a legitimate business mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. day one. Um, but, uh, but beyond that, no, none of the other trappings that go along with it. However, now I also do have an attorney that I, uh, I belong to a monthly membership of hers and she has, She's an amazing uh, digital uh, online entrepreneur attorney. And she was a, 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 an assistant DA. She's done wow. a TEDx talk. This gal's amazing. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll steal a referral from you. You have to. Yeah. So I'll definitely, I can post uh, <laughs> in there. I can post her membership because it's, it's not very expensive. I think it's like $47 a month. Wow. And it gives you all kinds of templates and, and things like, like, um, like uh, NDAs, if you're going to do an NDA with someone and you don't want someone to talk about this new product and you need a, a non-disclosure agreement, she's got those templates that you can use. Um, yeah, she's got the, the details of what you need on your website to, um, you know, the, the, ter the uh, terms of service and the privacy and all those privacy kinds of things on your website. Yeah. yeah, she's got all that stuff dialed. Um, but she's, she's a mate. she was a, an assistant DA her kids had to be escorted to school because she had a hit out on her uh, because she put so many rappers and gang members behind bars. Wow. Uh, that's crazy. So, yeah. She's got an amazing story. That's what her TEDx talk is about. She's crazy. So that's awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. a couple of people are asking for that referral. So we'll, yeah. uh, the generous we'll MKJ in. can, well, I'm sure we'll send it over and we can post that uh, with the yep. call here. Yeah. Um, so excellent. I love where we've gone with this. So um, it is one o'clock, but we have a little bit more time, guys. There will be a recording if you have to go. Um, but we will continue with the last point and then do some brief Q&A. So um, the last point here is how to sell that project service 
productized service to the others in the same industry vertical solution. Yeah, so there is where the whole um, doing a, a signature blog post or article of some kind, whether you're going to do that article on Medium or on your website or, you know, somewhere online, but have it be signature. Once you have that, that success behind you that you've created, and it doesn't have to be a million dollars in 99 days, right? I just was lucky that that happened, truly. We just poured everything in and did an experiment and it was like, oh my gosh, it works. It doesn't have to be that huge, right? It right. just needs to be success that you can point to. A certain right. percentage, obviously we mostly use those, right? A yeah. certain percentage increase on XYZ, whatever your conversion is. Once you have that, create a signature piece of content that shows. You can go to my site and you can see webinar chatbot case study and I go screen share. All, I, I show the, the flows, some of the flows that we use, and I take people through exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. don't, don't keep that, mm. okay? Like, this is mine and I can't talk about it because- Like, no scarcity mindset. Yeah, like, no scarcity mindset. Like Believe me, the people you want to work with, that you want to work with, will go to that and go, be blown away, mm. and go, there is no way I am going to do that myself. And they will hire you. <laughs> the people who want to do it themselves and they just want to take that, let them go because you don't want to work with them. <laughs> you don't want them to hire you. Number one, they probably couldn't afford you. And number two, they would be down your back. No, you just don't want it. So just do it. Just put that signature out there because what that does is that that makes you the expert. That makes you the expert in this field. I am not some... Stephen and I, I know we've talked about this. I am not some, some, I don't know what, you know, thing that just popped out of the sky fully formed and, and I know everything, right? No, I've stumbled through everything just like you have. I have to sit down and go crap on the pot just like anybody else. <laughs> so it's not, I'm not special. I, right? I, I have established myself as an expert in this because I have results in it. And that's the number one thing you need. You do that, you get that signature piece, you put it on your site, you put it out into the universe, you have your friends share it, you put it on Bot Academy and say, hey guys, what do you think? Um, is there anybody you, you know who needs to see this? And it goes out into the world. And uh, still, one signature piece of content on my bot, I mean, excuse me, on my page, brings in about 65 to 70% of all the traffic I get. And it's from that one piece of content. And it's the one piece that I wrote probably over a year ago, I think, um, why you should not build a chat bot on ManyChat or ChatFuel mm -hmm. and what you should do instead. And that brings me 65 to 70% of, of all the traffic on my site. Man, even that headline, I'm like, I want to read this. Like, where is this? See? <laughs> okay. And if there's problem. one thing, yeah, I, I will also put, so I hope, I'm, let me take, I'm not taking notes. So I want, if somebody could uh, let me know um, the things that I'm going to give you is the, <laughs> the link yeah. to, the link to um, Emily, the, the lawyer, yeah. um, the template. And the third thing I'm going to give you is a, um, a link to a page, a website, the, uh, Oh, what is it called? Advanced Marketing Institute. And I think it's aminstitute.com slash headline. So if anything, if you're looking for marketing stuff, this is the place you need to start. That one page, you can put in your headlines for your blog post, for your lead magnet, for your Facebook post, whatever. Put it in there and see what a, kind of a score it gets. And this thing scores your headline based on, um, I think it's uh, empathy, spirituality, and intellectual, those three categories. Wow. And it gives you a score as to how your headline affects those three things. And if you can get a 30 to, 30 to 40% is, the, is a good marketing. Anything over 50% and you're a genius. Wow. And so That's put really the, nice. that headline I put in that uh, AM Institute and got an amazing score. And, uh, and I, I combined that with my um, headline topics that I got from, gosh, um, oh gosh, over a two year, I think it was 2016, and I've updated it since then. But it's just like the headlines of us versus them, right? Um, mm. You know, do this or, 
and don't do that or mm -hmm. what not to do um, and what to do instead or you know your list topics or always going um, what the what the bot builders don't want you to know right oh, or yeah, you sure. know those kinds of headlines yeah tweak those words and we're talking tweak words like use the five tools versus the five tips right and see how those numbers change based on what you're saying or the five techniques right so just just changing a few words will make a difference in the impact of your headline so do that and that's how it. you get it out there like you can feel it, right? Like, I, I don't know if anybody else is like this, but hearing those words, like I, you, it just, you feel the energy. You feel like I want to read that. Like, oh, what's the secret? What are they hiding from us? Those, yes. You know? Oh, here, yes. Karina actually was able to post the headline that like there. Thank you, Karina. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, so, so do yeah, that, do cool. that, do that um, key piece of content and talk about it. Go into groups when someone is going to ask about, gosh, I'm, I got this web, my webinar, you know, go into webinar jam group. Mm -hmm. That's an open group. You have to be accepted, but it's not like you have to be a purchaser of anything. Um, and when people ask questions, I'm in that group. And I'm, when people ask questions about, you know, has anybody tried to connect their webinar jam to a bot? Well, hello. I'm here. <laughs> yes, I love it. Right? That. And I just catch them. I don't always get them all, but I catch them. And I've gotten clients that way. I've gotten clients who ask that question and I just give and say, yeah, you know what? You have to use Zapier. And, you know, there's actually an API call that you have to do because Webinar Jam, yeah, you could, it has Zapier, but it, it won't be able to bring you back into the. So I go into some of the details, but I say, here's what you can do. And it's amazing. And you can get like a 30% increase in your attendance and all that stuff. And they just like their head explodes. And they're like, I can't do this. Mm. I've got to hire somebody to do this. Um, and you that. get clients. So yeah, that is beautiful. And just all just facts. So I love this has been extremely valuable. So guys, we have about 20 minutes here left on our timer. Um, so what I'd love to do is I'm just going to go through our points here and just let's just do like a quick recap. And then um, while we're doing that, feel free to ready some questions and type them into the chat or since uh, or we could even let some people come on and just ask live here. So um, uh, if you want to start posting questions, um, let's do a little recap, MKJ. So what we started with here is how to choose an industry to work in, letting it choose you, finding that momentum and uh, and just kind of committing yourself to solving their pain points and, and, and knowing that, that that market is somewhere where you probably will be working in, in five years, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. How to productize your service. So taking that, that market and those results that you're getting and turn them into a bot that you can repeat, wash, rinse, repeat in an easy way. Um, how to, and then turning that that product that you sell as like webinar bots into a template so it's easy for others to buy or license or adapt on their own uh, so you can have like multiple packages. And just stop me if I'm not kind of hitting it the right mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, and then how to select other marketing components to help boost your results. So we're you've created systems that that like the Google Sheets integration where you're able to kind of help yourselves track sales, you're, you're teaming up with Facebook ads people and, and creating a great positive ecosystem where they're sending in leads and then the webinar bot is kind of converting those leads um, along with uh, some of these other tools like the AM Institute as well, like to help boost those results. Um, then we are into creating SOPs. So using platforms like Asana to, find and narrow down every single repeatable process that you have so that it's in this easy to access list. So you know that instead of just like reinventing the wheel every time you have a sales call, you're not doing that. Instead, you're actually um, just going to your lists or your boards or your project management systems and just following the, following the steps, making yep. it easy. Yep. And then lastly, um, how we're selling that product service to others in the same industry and vertical. Um, I don't have a, a intelligent way of explaining that one. Could you do like another brief? The same, yeah, the same way that you found the niche to begin with, just go mm -hmm. out to your community, create a signature 
post yeah. with your That's results. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a signature, um, you know, piece of content that really explains everything you've done and the results that you've gotten and then yeah. publish that and talk about it everywhere. And when people say, ask about it, so I, I direct people to that piece of content or then I did that speech at, at com uh, conversations conference, I direct them to that um, presentation or that piece of content or um, even some of the bots that I've done. Check it out here, go to this, mm -hmm. go to this Facebook Live, um, comment on it and you'll see exactly how it works. And that's, a, that's the best demo I could ever give them because it's a real life bot. It's not just a demo that I created just to hopefully give them some information on how it works. I right. send them to the exact results. I love that because at, at the end of the day, and what makes I think your whole life easier on this journey is selling the case study. Like yeah. when you just get to have these great case studies and at the end of the day, you don't have to have, because like one of the biggest things I think that can be a big impediment for people getting started is when you're having sales calls with people that you have to educate on what bots are, yeah. right? So when you're always having these calls and they're like, and they're not considering whether they're picking you or another chatbot provider, they're considering whether they do chatbots at all, which is still kind of where we are with this in most contexts. Um, it's way easier to have a conversation. Hey, I'm going to pull up this case study. Do you want these results? And have yeah. a conversation around creating those results for them instead of being like, well, you get the click rates and the open rates and the engagement and you're in Messenger where all their friends and family are and the, and yep. the trend of conversational yep. commerce and blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. I'm, I got to say, though, it is starting to shift. Over the last, uh, well, probably since about January of this year, I've been, most of my discovery calls already have a ManyChat account. They've already been diving in, trying to figure this out, or they've talked to people, or they've been in groups, they've been searching things. And I've actually had some come and say, well, you know, why should I choose you? So there's this guy that's in the real estate um, consulting market. And he's right. like, well, you know, I'm, ta I'm thinking about so-and-so and I'm wondering about you and your process is really different. He's just going to do Facebook ads and get in there. Why shouldn't I do that? I'm like, go for it. That, sh that sounds like a plan. If that's what you want to do and, and what he's talking about speaks more to you, I suggest you go and, mm -hmm. and, and work with him. If what I'm talking about was more organic and I use the, the keywords, the buzzwords that I know people are looking for and that work in my process... And if you want to have results like so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so, who are also in your real estate market, in your real estate consulting market, and we already have them as clients, we're already getting results for them, then you can stay with me and we can talk more. And that just like, what? You're working with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so? Are you kidding? Okay, never mind. That's fine. <laughs> I will do whatever you say. That is the, <laughs> those are the best words you can ever hear. I will do whatever you tell me to do. You just tell me what to do and I will do it. Love it. You can't have a better client. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, you know, and, and when you, I, and something really important in there that was subtle is that in your mindset, you're not just looking for anybody, you're looking for good fits. And I think that when you look for someone who is a good fit to be your client, the client all of a sudden is empowered with this great trust, like you're this trusted yeah. advisor, right? Yeah. And yeah. once you once you're able to attain that type of relationship, like everything is just so much easier, right? Yeah. Like the high maintenance clients just fall off the oh, tree, and then I'm not gonna sell. I'm not gonna sell this person. I'm not gonna try and compete with somebody else because yeah. we're totally different. I'm like, go have fun, great. I encourage you. If you, if that person speaks to you, go. In other words, remember, no expectation. No expectation. I don't want that person. If they're trying to pit me against someone else, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way you can. I, we're unique. None of us competes with each other. None of us. Let them go to someone else if they speak better. And when you let them go, they come running back most of the time. There was a, uh, a opportunity recently where that came up where I knew that the individual was kind of looking at multiple different builders. Um, and I, I, I actually wasn't chosen. And I learned that I had, I had put forth a price that was like three times anybody else. And I was like, great, I'm glad I wasn't chosen. <laughs> because, yes. because when, you, when you're not like knowing your value and you're doing all this work for like peanuts, you know, yes. that's, you know that that type of client is going to be down your back and is, yeah. is just kind of bargain shopping, right? Yep, yep. Um, and I think, you know, it's interesting you mentioned, because once I said that, I was like, yeah, you're really right. It has started a shift. And I think the ManyChat list has had a little bit to do with that as well, because I've been getting a number of leads from the ManyChat expert list. Yep. Um, so it's and I see, I see how many people visit my site from that expert badge, from that mm -hmm. expert list. 
mm-hmm. I see like yesterday, just yesterday, six people visited my site Yeah, from that page. It's interesting. Um, so yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, going to that. And I, and I, uh, at least two clients in the last two months have come from, and they said they saw me there. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a, just another touch point in a sense. Um, so here's a question. Uh, so from Dan, when you try to sell through addressing pain points, which three to, or five work in, a, in the most powerful way to sell a bot? Um, so what's your initial reaction to that one? So which, so clarify for me, which three to five pain points? So yeah, I so he's, I think, I think what Dan's looking for is the type of pay points he could use in a call, on a sales call to help sell messenger bots. So okay. I know that that's probably going to depend on the market and whatnot, but yeah, no, it's actually really standard. So no matter what, um, I always ask the same questions. I start the call because most people have heard about messenger. Um, very few, very few calls now where they've never even heard of it and they're just reaching out with this new thing that they just mm-hmm. now heard. So I specifically start the call. Uh, again, I don't do discovery in terms of selling. I just ask, so what questions can I answer for you? Mm-hmm. What, uh, what questions do you have about chatbots? What do you know about them? And how can I help you understand more? And I just open that up to see where their brain is first. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't tell anything about myself, about my company. I don't sell. I just ask questions. Mm. What do you know about chatbots? What questions can I answer? And that tells me some of them are already in the mini chat group. They've got a pro account. They've already got a sequence going and they, and it's not performing and they don't know what to do. Or they're like, well, gosh, I just heard about this thing. I jumped into this many chat thing and you know, I'm not quite sure how it works. And you know, I, I just want to know what you, what you do. Right. So mm-hmm. you, I need to find out where they are first. Um, mm-hmm. And then from there, I ask them what their current uh, marketing is. Are you using an email list? You know, are you actually using email sequence messages to sell? Do you have landing pages and sales pages? I mean, I, I need to ask and find out those, those pain points first. Where are they converting already? And if they're not converting at all and they're a brand new business, I'm not their fit. Mm-hmm. Um, if they already have a business and they already have some sales and some traction, then I can find the, the holes that might be there. Where are you not converting? Why are you here? Well, my email list is like only 10% open rate and, you know, not even 1% click through rate. And, uh, so we talk about that a little bit. And then once I gather that information, then I know I can, I can zero in on exactly how a bot can help them. Mm-hmm. And that's where I take my pain points based on what their current marketing entails and what's not working in their current marketing. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I think uh, I, I definitely, definitely brings me present. I always like to ask the first question the call is just, why did you book? It's where did you find us? Why did you book the call? You know, just to, to get that information. One other one I like is, uh, is what their highest margin item is to sell or like what they want to sell the most of. Because if you can sell that for them, then you'll have a client forever, right? Yeah. And so most people, they don't, people don't get on my calendar unless going through my, unless they go through my bot and they go through a, an application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in that application, I'm asking a lot of those questions. How big is your company? Do you have any employees or, you know, contractors? Do are you, do you have any other services you pay for like Facebook ads or, um, or email marketing or sales pages or, you know, whatever. Um, and I ask them those questions and if they answer, Nope, I am a superhero solo entrepreneur. I do it all. They're not a fit, uh, for me. And, uh, so they don't get on my calendar until they answer the right questions and hit all the right buttons. And then the last one is, Hey, I'd love to chat with you. I think we can really help book a time right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so all of that's already been done. I know they're there for a reason. I know yeah. they're there to, because they have a specific thing they want to use a chatbot for. Um, and so I just dive right into what can I answer for you and uh, have it as informational as possible. Um, but at the same time, I bring in the fact that we've done this for clients. You know, I very rarely get people who just think they want to chat with me, right? right. Uh, they know I have a business mm-hmm. and I'm going to try and find a solution for them. I had yesterday, I sent someone to Nick, Julia. Yeah. I was talking to him and he's got an Amazon store and I'm like, you know what? I could do this whole marketing automation intensive for you. Um, and I actually put it at $2,000 cause I kind of didn't, I didn't want to go into that 
industry, that market. <laughs> so I and said, there's you know, another little tidbit. If you don't want to do it, double your price. Yep. There you go. <laughs> so I just said, you know, I could do that, but you know what? I also have a network of people and there's one in particular that is an e-commerce expert. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling if I introduce you to him, he could probably help you better. So which would you prefer? For me to do and dive into your business for $2,000 and create a proposal for you or to just have me introduce you to Nick? He's like, number two. I'm like, fantastic. What's the email address? Let's go. <laughs> and, and send I it off. And I'm not sure if you do this, but there is a, uh, and I know that you often will just share client referrals and whatnot um, out of the abundant spirit. There's also opportunity. A number of us will do little referral percentages and just little things oh, yeah. like that to, you know, oh, yeah. you know, in those types of situations. Oh, so yeah. You, yeah. you can keep that in mind as well for anyone um, interested in that kind of thing. Oh yeah. So my webinar chat bot or anything that I do like that, I give a 10% um, affiliate commission to someone if they bring, you know, like a Facebook ads person, if they, so Michelle, she's made a lot of money off of me. <laughs> uh, Cause I give her 10% of any of the clients that she, she sends me not on a residual basis, but just that initial build. Right. Excellent. Okay, guys, we have about nine more minutes and there's just a few questions here left. So, so here's one. And uh, I'm on, I mean, there's been all these new bot softwares coming in. I mean, mobile Mo monkeys making this huge push. Um, I know the answer. What's your go-to bot software? <laughs> many chat, many chat, many chat. Woo. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. it is. Many chat is it. It's uh it's been from day one, the flow builder. It's 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 the way I think. Mm -hmm. Now I have to tell you, uh please hear this because right now we're doing messenger, and right now I know all of us are frustrated with Facebook. I have Facebook frustrations daily. Um they are schizophrenic, we know that. We know they shut things down and start things up and change things up and do whatever they want. And we have to then follow suit. We know that. Okay. But it's still an amazing platform, but I need you to hear me. Chatbots are evolving. I'm speaking to and consulting with a chatbot builder who is actually based. So I look at messenger as infant AI, right? This is an infant. It's not even sitting up in a, in a high chair yet. Okay. It's really infant. It's not artificial intelligence. It's, it's just call and response stuff and, and specifically with buttons and a few user inputs. Well, we're going into the next phase, which is a little bit of AI. And there's, there are companies that are forming chatbot agencies that are off of Messenger that are able to respond via text or via another openless app, which is an app, but it doesn't have to be downloaded on your phone. You can access it just online. So stay with this. Stay with the frustration because what's coming in the next couple of years, you will already have the skills to create these conversations no matter what the platform is. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, you're creating conversation. Mm -hmm. And like, I love the term conversational commerce, you know, at that, that the con conversations conference, because it gave me a little bit of a new perspective on it. Because you know it's going to evolve and you know it's going to improve. And, and one of the things about Facebook changing so frequently is that it requires an expert to help your business. Because if you're not staying on in the loop and learning all these new things all the time, then you're gonna get passed by. And yes. so anybody just joining and trying to get their business you know, going, even people who have established businesses, um, you, know, you, you end up needing experts uh, to help you. Yeah, and, and there's one more piece of content that I would suggest you check out. So Michael Stelzner's podcast, Social, Me Social Media Examiner podcast. Mm. He uh, just had an episode where I think the title totally caught my attention, Facebook, how Facebook is um, hurting marketers or you know, stopping marketers from succeeding or something that made me go, what? What is Facebook doing now to us? <laughs> mm. um, and he specifically said that the number of people, number of marketers, Diving into bots and wanting to learn about bots is going down drastically. And that makes it easier for bot experts and bot agencies to grow their business because people are going to be searching for experts in it. It's not easy to just do on your own like, it, like people thought it was, where you right. just dive in and create a mini chat account and do a flow and you get conversions. And it's getting it does, harder. It's much harder. Yeah. So you all are becoming the experts that people are going to want to seek out because they still want this platform. They still want these conversions that they see everybody getting, but they don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, cool. The last couple questions here. Um, Anthony asks, 
when you take on a client, are you setting up the mini chat account yourself or is it best uh, to have complete control? Oh, sorry. So basically is the client um, setting up the account or are you kind of setting an account for them or like, are they paying for it? Are you paying for it? Yeah. I used to pay for the account when I first started for the, for a year. I don't do that anymore. Almost all my clients already have many chat and if they don't have many chat pro, um, I try and go in to be the agency of record so that I get an affiliate commission, but most of the time I don't. Um, I think there's only one client that I'm getting an affiliate commission on. Um, but the rest of them already have a ManyChat Pro account typically. Mm. Now, this brings up a different point. Are you building a custom bot for them? And then if they say, no, I don't need you anymore, you leave everything there. And that's the majority of what I've always done. That's what I've done. I build it for them. It stays on their account. My webinar chat bot is mine. And it is my template. It is my integrations. And I have this in the contract that if they decide to stop using me, I take everything with me because it's mine, it's my proprietary pr process and my pr proprietary system, mm -hmm. especially the integrations. I do all the integrations on my Zapier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not theirs. Yeah. I've had one client lock me out of their account when they, when they stopped working with me and all my templates were on there. Okay. And with them, they can't really do anything except use the flows um, without my integrations. They would have to they would have to redo all those integrations because I do an API integration with ManyChat and Webinar Jam or Ever Webinar, mm -hmm. um, and that whole process of bringing coming back in and finding out a, if there's a sale or not. So that I keep on my Zapier. So there's there's no, they can't use it anymore if I shut it off. Um, this is actually something that I was doing a product call with Artem from ManyChat the other day just to go over some things and give feedback and answer some of their questions. And uh, that's one of the biggest things I mentioned is, is, is to create some sort of like master admin who's above Facebook page so that when you do create those kind of those bots that are more of a lease than they are that like you've bought a bot full on, um, you do have the ultimate authority because what I think has happened, I know that I've experienced a little bit of this. Anybody who's like the Facebook ads guy or another guy can yep. just come in and clone your work and start a business. Yep. Um, and I think that actually may have happened in a couple of cases. So uh, that was like one of the big pieces of feedback is security and making sure that there's accountability on that and that people can't just rip off these types of, in these types of contexts. So um, yeah. And you know, most of the people, I, I, again, even with that, I let that go because um, I know my process, no matter what they do, they cannot catch up to the amount of experience that I've built in this process. Um, so I'm not worried that they're going to, uh, well, first off, you know, I can go after them for trademark. You know, if they try and say webinar chat bot or messenger funnels or something like mm -hmm. that, I can say, dude, that's mine. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you can't do that. Um, but, it, but beyond that, they, they don't have the experience that I do in this, mm. this one world. And now I'm getting so deep into webinars that I'm actually helping with AI to build a webinar chat bot, a chat bot for live chat in EverWebinar or Webinar Jam. Excellent. That's for the live great. chat function, we're actually building a chat bot to respond automatically to the questions in the live chat during a webinar. So they, they're not there, right? I have built these relationships over the last two year and a half to two years. They're not there. So if they think they can take those templates and run with them, I say, karma, baby, go for it. Mm -hmm. right. It's going to come back on you. It's just going to come back. When you steal something, you're not going to have anywhere near the success. And there's the abundance mindset again. I love it. Um, exactly. And Tom makes a good point that any, any of the cloners that would take your stuff are not the clients you want. I think in my mindset, it was more like other agencies working in projects yeah. that are Facebook yeah. page admin is yeah. more of a concern. Yeah. But yeah, I totally hear that. And, uh, and very good feedback there from Mary. Um, so I think we have probably time for one last question. Uh, Colin is asking, and do you, do you have a process for creating that kind of bot personality? Or how do you decide like what kind of personality a bot should have? Yes, I do. Um, I, this is really the key, the crux. I have a whole training on that. Uh, but I take my own team and I, um, I train them to wrap their brain around this brand. Um, so we have fun with this most of the time. Um, I worked with Dana Malstaff, Boss Moms, and she created a, a whole um, Boss Mom Betty 
was her name. And this is the persona for the bot. And we, I talked to my clients about that. What is going to be the persona? I have another guy who's in the real estate uh, industry. His, his brand is get shit done. So that's going to be very different persona than boss mom Betty. Uh, so you really just wrap your brain around their content. We go out and we watch their webinars. We go out and we look at their content. We look at what they post. We look at all their sales pages and just wrap our brain around who they are and how they speak and how they come across to their prospects. Mm -hmm. Because those are the people you have to speak to. Um, and that, that's, it really is just, and luckily my, like I said, my project manager is an actor. So ah. she can do this very well. Excellent. Uh, if you need to hire someone, I would go out into the acting community and see oh. if, if they can do that, if they can wrap their, themselves into a character, they're amazing at this. Well, 90% of actors uh, need side money. Need so. work. They need, <laughs> they need side of work. Trust me, uh, I worked yep. with them for a long time, but, uh, yep. I love that. Yes. Yeah, so I know another, another colleague of ours, Kelly likes to do this, uh, like a broad brand, brand guidelines form. Yes. So she'll mm -hmm. like ask a bunch of specific questions. I've seen that done too. Yep. Um, but yeah. And that's part of our needs that. assessment. Yeah. Steven, that's definitely part of our needs assessment. We ask those questions. We ask for their brand board. We ask for their colors and their logos and their fonts and all of that. But it really is just absorbing who they are and what they post and how they act. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's, it's, it's both of those things. We definitely ask those questions on our needs assessment as well. I love it. Well, this has been incredibly valuable. Uh, MKJ, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, thank you, everybody, for all the great, great questions. A um, little applause for MKJ. <laughs> love bots. Thank you, love guys. Bots. Awesome. Anybody, reach out. Any, any other questions or every, <laughs> anything else you need, just let me know. I'm, I'm open. I definitely chat anytime. I love it. Thank you so much, MKJ. And for anybody wondering, we will post any of the uh, the resources that we discussed after the call on the, with the link for the uh, replay. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much. Have a fantastic day uh, from Bot Academy signing off. Ciao. Bye.